Hi everyone, it's Stacia. I wanted to do just a quick video on the properties of watercolor paper. I know there are a lot of questions out there around watercolor paper. What type of paper should you use? What type of paper should you get? And can you use other art grade paper that you may have that you've used with other mediums such as acrylic or pastel. And so just wanted to share a little bit about my experience with watercolor paper and what I have learned about watercolor paper to help you kind of make your own decisions. Although I do think um, it's somewhat of a personal decision. I've gone and tried a lot of different brands and so have my favorites and um, that's really kind of personal to me. And so I would encourage you also to try a variety of different papers as well. Um, a lot of paper it is made out of wood pulp, but the most common ingredient, I guess, I guess that's the word I want to use, the most common ingredient that makes up watercolor paper is, uh, um, in good watercolor paper, is 100% cotton rag. Sometimes it's linen, but um, the most popular type of paper used is 100% um, ra cotton rag. Um, it's absorbent, it handles a lot of abuse, and and that's one reason why it's a good quality. Um, it's good quality for watercolor paper. Now, the more expensive or the higher priced watercolor paper, using um, that that cotton rag uses longer fibers. Some of the more value based or value priced paper has shorter fibers. And the only reason why that's important to know is that if you have gotten um, a, a more modest paper, more modestly priced paper, and you're doing a lot of reworking, the shorter fibers can begin to fray and almost kind of change the texture, it gets a little fuzzy on the surface of the paper. Again, it's not a big deal. It's just important for you to understand that that's what's going on. One of the key components about what makes watercolor paper different though is that watercolor paper has sizing in it. And um, high quality papers have sizing not only on the outside of the paper, but as those fibers are being molded and created into a sheet of paper, it has the sizing mixed into it. So it's almost like the fibers are enveloped in this sizing. And um, very good quality paper too, though, also has it just on the surface. Um, and what that sizing does, the reason that, I, that that is important in a watercolor paper, that's not necessarily, um, more often than not, quite frankly, not in other kinds of paper, like Bristol paper or mixed media paper, does not have sizing. And what the sizing does uh, specifically to watercolor is it slows the absorption of both the water and the color. It's what allows you to manipulate and move both water and color on the surface of your paper for a lot longer. That sizing also keeps the vibrancy in your watercolor um, because it doesn't absorb um, too quickly or 100% all the way it dries down on the surface of the paper. The next two things I wanted to talk to you about um, that's really important is the weight and then also the finish of the paper. And so I have some examples to show you. Um, you'll see the most common, and, and the, I, I do know that there are a variety of different, uh, a, a different weights out there, but the most commonly seen weights, the most easily um, accessible, most accessible type of weights of paper um, is a 90, 140, 90 pound, 140 pound, or 300 pound. Um, 90 pound is really kind of um, student grade with watercolor. The thicker, the better, the higher weight. <laughs> unlike in the modeling industry, the higher weight for watercolor paper, the better because it can handle more water, it can handle more color, it can handle more erasing and abuse um, than a lighter weight one. And so I don't have any 90 pound watercolor to show you, but I do know on average, the average 90 pound weight watercolor is the same as two um, pieces of regular regular paper obviously it has the sizing so it's not it's not this paper but I wanted you to see the weight so this is the weight there's a lot of people who will get 90 pound to practice on I'm a big proponent of practicing on the same paper that you plan to create on because it really gives you the opportunity to um, create something special and not have to transfer it over or be sad that you created it on a lesser grade paper um, and not only that but you're 
your paints and what you can do are different on a 90 pound piece of paper than it is off of a 140 pound or off of a 300 pound. And so I really encourage you to practice um, on high quality paper so that you get used to that and you can see what it can do. Um, this is uh, the same Strathmore paper that I showed you that I get on Ready Cut. This is just five by seven, but this is 140 pounds. So you can see it is, um, some people also call this student weight, although it is also used by many artists. The 140 is normally what I use, um, but it is much thicker than what you get here, right? It's much thicker and you can, um, it, it can take a little bit of more abuse. And then um, the most luxurious, and I cut this off of a larger sheet because the sheet, again, was a 22 by 30, so it's really difficult to see. This is by Arches, um, but this is the 300 weight. And you can see the difference. I mean, it's kind of sad to compare them side by side. Probably not very fair, but like you can, you, you could cut bread with this 300 pound um, paper. Um, a lot of people will create off of the 300 pound paper and not have to secure it because it, it, it's, it almost feels like a, um, a really thin cardboard, um, but it's not. It's beautiful paper. Um, but it is, it is the most expensive paper that I purchase. Um, I think it's the most expensive type of paper out there. So it is um, something somewhat of an investment, but this paper is really is amazing to work on. But I, on a day-to-day -day basis, I use my 140 because it's, it's also very strong and very good. I wanted to show you the final thing to help you make a decision in regards to the paper that you want to get and you want to create, and that is finish. And so when you speak to a watercolor paper finish, it really is about the texture that's on the surface of the page. And um, I tend to use a lot of hot press paper. Um, watercolor paper comes in hot press, cold press, and then a, a texture called rough. I know that there are some brands out there playing with some in between a cold and a hot press right now. Um, but the hot press, I'm gonna bring it up so you can see it. The hot press is, is really very smooth. And you do get some variances between the brands that you use with this as well. So I've used some, um, some brands of smooth that actually have more texture, some brands of smooth that have no texture. This is the Strathmore 500 series. This is that pre-cut sheet. But I really like the smooth texture because I um, like to get a lot of detail in my illustration and I like to use a lot of pencil line. And so the hot press allows me to do that and get and, and be able to manipulate my line and my color in the way that I want to. Also, I tend to scan my work. And so if you scan your work, versus sometimes take photographs of your work. If it has a lot of texture on the paper, sometimes your scans get shadows on them because that texture, even though it's still somewhat subtle, causes little peaks and valleys, which is the beauty of it. Um, but hot, hot pressed paper is what I tend to use and is sometimes a little bit easier for a beginner watercolor to use because um, you're not having to take into consideration the texture so much of the paper and the finish so much of the paper. So I really do love the hot press. Um, and also, just so you know, um, I, I know I've shared this in classes before, but the way I remember the difference between a hot press and a cold press is if you were to take your paper and run a hot iron over it, um, you would press out those wrinkles and you would press out that texture and that's where you get that really smooth texture. And in fact, when these papers are being made, they do go over hot rollers and that's what um, kind of smooths out all of that texture and gives it its smooth finish. On the opposite end, you've got cold press paper and I think you can kind of see the texture in the cold press. So if you've ever, and I know I'm not the only one, been trying to iron something and not realize that the iron is no longer on so you're ironing with a cold iron, this is what happens. The wrinkles still stay. You have that texture and again this is gorgeous to paint on um, and when you are watercoloring on a, hot, a cold press paper your color will kind of get variations in the color because you will um, have 
um, color subtle in some of the valleys and then more of the water or more of the paper shines through some of the hills in the paper and so you get a, 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 a neater variance, a neater texture, um, more variance and more texture um, with a cold press. And then the most textured is what, what, they, what they call rough. And so they're, the rough texture really gives you a variety of different finishes. Um, a lot of your handmade papers are probably going to be more rough. Again, make sure still though that a handmade paper is identified as a watercolor paper because that it has the sizing. Sometimes though, what I've found is with rough paper, um, the sizing depend upon how it's applied. Um, sometimes you get places where your paper really grabs your color and where it doesn't. And so sometimes the sizing can be a little bit um, haphazard as well and you'll notice a difference. And so what I just wanted to show you is um, a, a little a very quick demonstration of of watercolor on the three different types. So just want to make sure I'm lined up here and you can see it. So I've got hot pressed here, cold pressed in the center, and then this is um, the rough. I'm just taking a little bit on my core red. And see when you apply it to, when you apply it to the hot pressed, it goes on very smooth. When you come in, to the cold press, you can see that it starts, some of it starts, and it's pretty watered down, but some of it will start to, to settle in to some of the valleys and give you a little bit more texture, which is, which is again, a really nice effect and very unique. And then when I come over to the rough, you can see that you kind of have to be a little bit more deliberate if you want a full coverage. If not, it's going to leave you um, automatic white, which again, I really like as well. <laughs> but you can see the difference of how, how the hot press versus the cold press versus the rough paint. Um, and again, you can see the variation in color as it begins to dry. You see that even more with the cold press. And a lot of it has to do with color as well. I hope this helped you a little bit understand a little bit more about watercolor paper and why it's an important aspect of you having fun and being satisfied um, with the pieces that you're going to create in flow. But if you do have any additional questions, please let Brandy or I know. Again, we will be sending out a... Um, a supplies list that will have um, specific papers that Brandy likes to use and specific papers that I like to use. Please know that you can use whatever paper you do choose. I would only say that you're probably going to need more paper than you think you're going to need because we're going to be doing a lot of practice and although we'll make things out of some of those practice sheets, um, you'll want to be able to have a nice a nice little stash to be able to do what it is that you want to do as often as you want to do it. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Please let me know again if you have any additional questions, and I'll see you soon.